Hey everybody! So I'm finally doing a video on rug hooking. There you go. Like that. <laughs> and I guess, you know, you don't have to be an expert to do this. Uh, sure, the more you do, the better you get at it. But the beautiful thing about this is they're not really... Well, of course, you know, some people... There's always some people that do get anal about everything. Whether it's compost making, gardening, or rug hooking. But, you know, like I was saying, this is the beauty of it. Uh, as long as you got the simple technique down, which is really easy, uh, basically you do whatever you want. This was made with absolutely no, none of the rules I've seen other people do on the internet. It looked pretty great. And by the way, I did the star crooked on purpose. <laughs> yeah, you see, this one is way better. And this one is even better. So, yeah. Uh, first of all, what do you need? Well, you need some uh, burlap. As you can see, I already drawn some uh, drawing on on there, which will serve as a um, well, the blueprint, I guess, of my uh, my uh, future rug. And you know, you just fill that. This is a tree, so I'm going to be filling that with brown. Those are leaves. I'm going to be filling with green grass. Some probably another kind of green. Some little goats. And you know you can use a well I'll get but I'll get to that after that. <coughs> Sorry there. Alright, basically what you need, you can get a fancy uh I guess a fancy rack to do your hooking on. You can check uh, just on the internet, you can find many models. But what I use for making these by the way are mug rugs, they're like little rugs like that. Which you can of course put your coffee mug on. I just used basically a uh, little circle like that. I forget the name. <laughs> you know, it's to do some little doilies or whatever. Works pretty great. You can get bigger ones if you want to make. Like this one, of course, I use a bigger one. But for this one, which was square, I use this contraption. Which basically, I just took an old, um, uh, well, just an old frame basically, and put some nails in it and what this does is that you just get that you just do it like that you get your burlap tight like this Boop. and basically it holds your burlap in place because you need to be able to go underneath it and on top of it to hook so yeah this of course is necessary you need either this or that or a big rack and what else of course a hooking rug a hooking hook that's why it's called hooking it's not because it's the made by prostitutes <laughs> anyway the size of the hook what well, depends this is probably the one i like what is it i don't remember the uh, the size and for that what do you need well you need a lot of um this these are old t-shirts that I've cut up. This is like a um, snuggie. <laughs> I got some um, wool, some cheap dollar store uh, yarn, I got some old uh, scarves, some bags and what you do basically you cut them in little strips with this. Now the strips are about uh, what that big. <laughs> Let me just check here on my ruler. I guess they're about a quarter of an inch or a bit smaller. You know, you just go by, you know, you you feel it. Just go by the size of it. Because, you know, you need to fill each strip through these little holes so they don't have to be uh, that big. And, of course, I'm using one of these to cut. Ah, they work really, really well. So, yeah, and you need some... Uh, this is a Paul, a Paul Street thread. It's really really strong. I'll show you later on. And of course, you know, you need to be able to draw or uh, copy some uh, some drawings on your burlap. Now, did I forget anything? Oh yeah, and I guess a place to store all your crap. <laughs> yeah, no, that's it. All right, so let's go hook. All right, so let's hook. Now you can see I've got one hooking going on there. 
it's upside down, it's a rooster. Uh, and I'm using one of these uh, circle. Works great for little mug rugs. But for this, like if I had a bigger size, but I would use my, uh, my makeshift uh, hooking rag there. Anyway, so basic. Take your uh, little hook, put it. Let me just adjust the camera there. There you go. <coughs> put it through the burlap like this. Underneath it, uh, there you go. You take your string and you hook it up with my hook. There you go. Like that. And you just pull it through the burlap like this. Since this is my first uh, well, little thing there, <laughs> my first hooking. I just let this one out. Well, you can do it not as long. <laughs> and later on, we're gonna snip snip it out. All right. So now there's a lot of technique. Well, not a lot of techniques, but you know, depending on how big is your uh, your stuff you're using. Well, maybe you want to go like one, one, two, three, and then you jump one hole, and then you keep going one, two, three. But I found that if you have really, really thin material there, you can almost go all the way. And usually when you skip a row, well, you leave at least one row between your material there again. So, let me show you again. All right, there you go. I go, there you go, if you can see, right next to it, there. Put my hook through it. There you go. And, again, this one is more or less round. But if you would have like a um, flat piece of... Uh, you don't have any on hand. Flat piece of, um, you know, like wool or something. You might have to uh, attach it differently on the hook. This way, I guess, try it. <laughs> You'll get it uh, fast enough from experience. All right, once again, hook it up, pull it out, and now here comes the tricky part. You want to pull your uh, your wool or whatever towards the one you already hooked because if you don't you're gonna just pull this one out like that look wait like that <laughs> and you don't want that <clears throat> and you see this one is way too long because you don't want your hooking to be this thick what you do you go behind this and you pull on the string just like that hope you can see both see and then you adjust it the way you want it Yes, put it that way. All right. We're gonna go the one just underneath it. You attach it up on your hook like that. You pull it through like this. You pull it towards the one you already hooked. Yeah. You pull it back. You pull it forward just to make sure. I'll show you this. Uh, yeah. There you go. You see the one I hooked before right there it's really snug against the burlap that's what you want you don't want it to be making like big bumps yeah look at this one see that now this is wool so it's not wool but uh some yeah it's wool but it's just like wool yarn yarn that's the word i want <clears throat> so it does make a bigger one this was just some uh well it was exactly like this this by the way is those you know those little uh what they call snuggies yeah they're just like snuggy tri strips <laughs> so yeah this is what you want your back looking like you know little humps really close and tight to your burlap <clears throat> and again you go like that you adjust it go to the one oh there you go underneath it you hook it on your little hook like that pull it through Pull it towards, and now I'm just adjusting like that. I'll just show you. Ah. Yeah, the table's kind of in my way. There you go. And I'm just pulling it back, tugging on it, pulling it back, tugging to make sure it's really snug there. There you go. Ah. Anyway, seems a bit complicated, but the best way to do it is just to try out. Yeah. And again, if you want to like change direction, because usually I hook without 
much directions because I don't like to see all straight lines. You can turn your uh, work. Like that. Oh, my sister turns her work. What I do, I just switch my hook that way or that way, and you hook. There you go, that way or that way, depending on where you want to go. And you just hook next to it, well, one row next to it, like that. And you pull it out. Oh, just hook it. There you go, pull it out. And now you pull it towards the last one you made, which is this way. And there you go. Now you keep on going that way. And you can make lines like that. Yeah. And you can keep on going, you can do rounds if you want to. Just try it. There's not much technique to it. Of course, there is some people that does. But you know me, how fast is the way. <laughs> All right, so my hooking is done. Look at that, ain't that cute? Yeah, somebody's gonna recognize this eventually. <laughs> so as you can see, where I've ended a, um, well, a row of uh, you know, the material I was using, I started the other one in the same hole. This is another technique there. And this is what I meant when I said I was gonna snip them off, just like that. See, there's two of them. Uh, let me just get both my fingers there. All right. Uh, where am I? There you go. Snip it off. And again, snip it. Of course, you want to make sure you don't snip any of the material next to it that is actually hooked. Yeah, like that. Boop. There you go. Now it's done. <laughs> and just to make sure all the fibers of the burlap get all tight around your hooking, I'm gonna be using a, there you go, there you go, a steamer, uh, hey, what's that called in English? Steamer, I guess. By the way, I'm just putting some water so I don't burn my hooking yeah you can do this before and get your little you know your piece of a well this is a bat bat uh, there you go <laughs> and yeah you can see why I'm uh, wetting the um, well my piece of heavy cloth there there you go because I don't want it to be burned. And also it's gonna make more humidity go into your, uh, ooh, your hooking. And you don't necessarily want to press it or anything. Just want the steam to do its job. And I guess uh, put the burlap back to its uh, well, somewhat original state where it's Gonna tighten up again around the um, well, whatever pieces of linen you use to make your hooking. Now let me just check. Oh yeah, it's already really different. <laughs> Ow! Yeah, it's get hot too. I'm just gonna turn it around. Like that. And you're gonna see that it really changes the uh, the look of the hooking. Before it all looks like, you know, I don't know, well, the rows look a bit uh, not as ordered as they'll be after this is done. Yeah, I guess that's good enough for the first steaming. Some people do steam it a second time. Third. Yeah, remove your bath towel. Look at that. Ooh, <laughs> just making it a bit round. And this is the time if your burlap isn't like, you know, it's kind of crooked, the lines of your burlap, well, you want to stretch it to make it perfectly round or square if it's a square you made. As far as this is concerned, it's pretty good like that. Let me show you, it's still steaming hot. There's a bit of a 
Oh no, that's alright, it's just the angle of the camera. Yeah, steaming hot off the press. <laughs> alright, now I'm just gonna leave that for 24 hours. Just so it uh, dries out thoroughly. Because it does take a time, uh, quite some time to actually become uh, dry again. And yeah, if you have like a um, drying rack, you know, with little shelves, this is what you want to use. Uh, I've got one, but it's not my home office. So I'm just going to leave that there for uh, 24 hours at least. And after that, we are going to hook, not hook, but stitch this to the back and finish the hooking.